Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for joining Tech Field Day 2020. Uh, this is Praveen Lokesh, a solution architect with Fortinet. Just to let everyone know, this is a recorded demo. And in this demo, we'll look at how we integrate uh, um, our uh, powerful SDN connectors with our SD WAN solution and create a true dynamic uh, hybrid cloud environment. Yeah, this is the topology diagram um, uh, that we have configured already. Uh, our cloud cloud 40 gates uh, fabric connector can work in conjunction with uh, our SD WAN to select the best and most uh, uh, optimal path for cloud based applications. In our demo, we have a hybrid cloud environment spanning AWS, Azure, and also on prem, as you can see here. Let's uh, look at each component. Uh, let's look at our data center 40 gate first. Uh, we have dual uh, internet connectivity on interfaces WAN 1 and WAN 2 can be seen there. And there are four, uh, two IP sec tunnels to the 40 gates running in Azure and AWS. So there are four tunnels that are part, part of our, uh, that, are, that is relevant to our architecture. And these four tunnels are part of our SD-WAN interface as well. In our Azure environment, we have a 40 gate running in the UK South region, and there are some virtual machines behind it. These virtual machines are web servers that can spin up and down instantaneously, uh, depending on the application requirements. These virtual machines will be accessed by both AWS and on-prem resources as well. Along with this, uh, the Azure setup also has a 40 manager and an analyzer behind the 40 gate. When we look at the AWS environment, we have a 40 gate in the US East region, and there are some work loads behind it as well. These resources, as we mentioned earlier, will need to access the resources in both Azure and also the on-prem as well. We'll have three IPsec tunnels configured on the AWS 40 gate. Let's look at them. One is a direct IPsec tunnel to uh, Azure and the other two are IPsec tunnels to the dual internet connection on the data center firewall. So in a dynamic environment like public cloud, workloads can spin up and down instantaneously. With our SDN connectors, we can have these changes automatically reflect on our dynamic address object. Uh, the SDN connectors make API calls to the cloud providers and populate the dynamic address object with the right set of workloads. These can also be used for like cloud specific high availability setups where we need to make a change to the, the route table or like disassociate an IP from one instance, from the active instance to the passive instance during a failover. So even for that, like we utilize our SD-WAN, the SDN connectors, uh, which has the ability to make uh, API calls to uh, cloud providers like AWS, Azure and GCP as well. And so let's now configure our AWS 40 gate for secure SD-WAN access to access the resources in Azure through the three paths that were available. Like we saw that there, it has three IPsec tunnels. So let's first configure the SDN connector and the, the dynamic address object. Uh, the SDN connector is already configured. So look to, I mean, to look at it, obviously we went into the uh, external connector. This, this particular connector is making uh, uh, API calls to a specific uh, resource group. So let's create a new address object. Uh, we'll be creating a dynamic address object. So since it's in Azure, let's call it Azure Apps. And for the type, we would choose dynamic and uh, select the, the fabric connector type as the Azure. And it has plenty of fil filters, including Kubernetes filters. But the filter that we are going to select for our uh, deployment is a name uh, equal to hybrid cloud. So any resource that has this tag will get added to the dynamic address object. So let's wait for a, a second or two and let's refresh and it, it should have the latest uh, um, IP address assigned to the dynamic ad address object automatically. Let's mouse over that and we should be able to see the IP address that it's resolving to. So um, let's log into Azure portal and see like the, the virtual machines with the with the same tag. So we logged into the virtual uh, Azure environment and we are looking at one of the uh, um, uh, servers that has the tag name equal to hybrid cloud. Let's make sure that we verify the IP address again from on on the um, on the dynamic address object. Uh, it, uh, it has a couple of IPs, uh, 100511 and 10055. Let's go back to Azure and verify that the IP address of this particular virtual machine is uh, one of that. 
we see that it's uh, 10,011, which is one of the um, um, addresses that the dynamic address object uh, is resolving to. So all the all the 40 gates log centrally to our 40 analyzer, which is our logging platform. So let's look at the, the 40 analyzer. Um, we see that all the 40 gates in our setup are logging and uh, uh, under 40 view, we should be able to see that uh, uh, the logs from all the all the devices from a centralized location. So here we are seeing the top threads from all the devices. Obviously we can drill down to individual uh, device and look at the logs specifically to that as well. When we look at the traffic log, we can sort it by the source, the destination, and or even the, the policy hit uh, among, among other things. And th this is our logging platform and all these 40 gates are also managed by our uh, 40 manager and hence the configuration change to any 40 gate can be made from the 40 manager as well. 40 manager enables us to create uh, objects that can be reused for multiple other 40 gates in the same administrative domains also called as ADOMs. In our example for the a ADOM uh, AWS, we have just one 40 gate, which is our AWS 40 gate. And uh, let's create some, uh, I mean, configuration change from the 40 manager and push it to the uh, 40 gate. Uh, real quick about those logs. Do you store a copy at each CSP and then maybe replicate them back and forth? Uh, how, how does that work? R so on the, the data? Yeah, on the 40 gate itself, there is a, an option to uh, specify where the uh, 40 analyzer is and like we uh, kind of like send the logs to uh, that specified IP address under 40 analyzer setting. So we don't store anything on the CSP itself, but like we, we can send it to, as long as it has IP connectivity to the analyzer, we, we, we can send it to the, the 40 analyzer. So in our example, the, the 40 analyzer was actually sitting in uh, Azure, but all our three 40 gates and uh, on-prem AWS and Azure are still logging to the same 40 analyzer. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, cool. But that makes me ask the question, can I have a distributed 40 analyzer? Because I kind of don't like the idea of my logs just sitting in one Absolutely. Spot. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, like I mentioned, like you can have a uh, 40 analyzer in each environment or a centralized uh, um, a 40 analyzer as well. And same goes for 40 manager as well. So let's configure some SD-WAN configuration. Um, to configure that, we, we already see that the, the IPsec tunnels are part of the uh, uh, SD-WAN interface. Let's create a performance SLA first. Uh, let's call it Azure Apps or Azure Applications. And for the detect server, let's uh, select one of the IPs that is in our Azure environment, which is 10.05.12. And uh, for the participants, we can specify specific uh, interfaces or you can choose all uh, SD-WAN interfaces. Here we select all the three available interfaces and let's create the performance SLA. This enables us to send ping packets to that IP uh, across the three tunnels from the AWS 40 gate. So let, now that we have the performance SLA, let's create a SD-WAN rule also. So let's call it Azure Applications. And um, uh, for the source, we can specify a specific uh, source address or you can specify all as well. For, for the destination, we would be using the, the dynamic address object that we created on our AWS environment. Um, for the... Um, Outgoing interface strategy will use the best quality. That's the uh, that's one of the available options. Um, we, we also have other options as you can see. And let's select the interface preferences, all the available uh, IPsec tunnels. For the measured SLA, we can choose the Azure Apps uh, performance SLA that we created. For the selection criteria, there are quite a few options. So, like we are choosing latency, but like there are options like bandwidth and stuff. Even for strategy, even though we select best quality, there are other options like including manual. So now we have the SD-WAN configuration on the 40 manager. It's time to push this configuration to the 40 gate itself. To, to do that, let's uh, click on install wizard. That'll, um, that'll start the uh, policy push to the 40 gate from the 40, 40 manager. So let's select the policy package that's in question. And uh, let's go ahead and install the configuration onto the 40 gate itself. So once this is complete, we should be able to log into the 40, 40 gate itself and look at the configuration and see how it pushed on onto the uh, device itself. So let's wait for this to complete. 
And, and everything that we're seeing through, through the GUI can also be accomplished uh, via a command line? Yes, that is correct. And also uh, we have open APIs as well. So now that the policy push has gone through, let's log into the 40 gate and let's verify that the setting is, settings are there. So when we look at the performance SLA, we see that the AWS to Azure has the least latency and hence that should be the preferred interface for the traffic. We can also look at stuff like packet loss or jitter across all the three links in, in a graphical representation. And we can play, uh, base our uh, um, um, SD-WAN rules on those criteria as well. When we look at the SD-WAN rule itself, we can clearly see that like AWS to Azure is the preferred interface for the for the traffic in question. So let's create like some real world traffic. So I'm gonna log into one of the AWS instances that is sitting behind the AWS FortiGate. And I'm gonna generate some traffic to the Azure environment. So uh, I'm generating some HTTP traffic. Uh, let's do something like uh, SSH as well. So once we uh, generate some traffic, we should be able to verify that it is using uh, the, the interface that is selected by the uh, SD-WAN from both the 40 gate and also on the 40 analyzer or logging platform as well. As you can still see that uh, AWS to Azure is still the preferred interface. And uh, let's look at the 40 analyzer now to verify that the outgoing interface is indeed AWS to Azure. So you're logging into the 40 analyzer and under 40 view, we should be able to look at the specific uh, um, traffic from AWS to Azure. So let's filter out by just the AWS 40 gate. And uh, let's uh, drill down to the HTTP traffic in question. And if you look, look at the outgoing interface for this particular log, we should be able to see which interface it's uh, using. Clearly it's using the AWS to Azure as expected. This path is dynamically selected by our SD-WAN uh, selection criteria. So in a real world scenario, obviously things fail and VPN tunnels do go down. So, so to simulate a failure, let's uh, log into the 40 gate and disable the, the tunnel interface, which is, which is currently being used, which is AWS to Azure. So um, I mean, right click and disable that. What that does is like it, in, it, uh, uh, it triggers the SD-WAN to select the next best path for the traffic from AWS to Azure. Um, we can verify that by going to uh, SD-WAN rules and see which interface is now being used. So let's navigate to uh, SD-WAN under network. We can clearly see that uh, the uh, SD-WAN has calculated that the DC VPN one is the next best path. And uh, under performance SLA, we can see that the AWS to Azure uh, VPN tunnel is down and hence uh, one of the other two uh, interfaces would be used. So I'm back into the AWS uh, for uh, instance and I'm trying to generate some more uh, traffic to Azure. Let's generate some HTTP traffic as well. And now let's look at the 40 analyzer and see what we see there for logs and like which interface is being used. We should technically see the DC VPN one because that's the interface that it's using. And we look at the HTTP traffic and uh, yeah, as you can see here, the outgoing interface is now using the, the DC VPN. Okay, so as you can see with our SD-WAN functionality built into the 40 gates and these dynamic address object uh, being used as the destination in the SD-WAN rules, the best po possible path is determined for the dynamic cloud-based applications running in any cloud, um, any public clouds. In this case, it was AWS and Azure.